Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. This is the fourth portion of the talk on decolonizing our minds. In this one, we are concerned with the emergence and dominance of the West and whether this has been helpful or harmful to humanity as a whole. I'm going to start by a brief review of the first three segments. The first segment was about colonization and decolonization. And basically, this concerned the fact that the psychological impact of Western global conquest was the creation of an inferiority complex in the East. And this is the major uh, problem that we face today in terms of uh, development. The second post examines the European historical experience. The way that this has the story has been told has glorified the West. And this story is the main source of the colonization of minds because the tale as told by the victors uh, glorifies their achievements and makes it appear as if the East had no accomplishments in the past at all. One of the critical aspects of the myths created by this fabricated history is that Europeans are uniquely rational and scientific and civilized and advanced and have all great characteristics, while all other people of the world are barely human or subhuman because they are not able to think correctly. They are not able to think rationally. They don't have science. They don't have technology. They don't have anything worth. Um, so the fourth part of our talk, which is this current one, deals with two basic, two major myths created by the European uh, Eurocentric version of the story. One is that the uh, process of global conquest and colonization was carried out for the purpose of bringing the benefits of the advanced civilization of the West to the ignorant and barbaric natives. And the fourth myth is that tremendous progress has been made by mankind under Western leadership. So the third Eurocentric myth is that the process of conquest and colonization was carried out for the benefit of mankind. So uh, there are uh, the, the story is that this was a civilizing mission that West was civilized and we were ignorant and barbarian savages. So they wanted to bring the benefits of their civilization to the barbarians. And that's why they conquered and killed and looted the world. The defeat of USA in Afghanistan is a landmark, a signpost of the crumbling of Western hegemony and uh, loss of Western power has led to the emergence of the counter narratives, which describe the reality and the truth of colonization, not as a glorious process of bringing civilization to the natives, but as a barbaric and ruthless mission to exploit the world and destroy civilizations. As these truths come out, many people who have been regarded as heroes in Western history because they brought great wealth to the uh, Europe, have uh, begun to be appreciated as the villains and uh, robbers and looters that they really were. One of them, for example, was Columbus, whose statues have recently been pulled down in the USA. And there's the motion to uh, that roads must fall, which uh, is uh, aimed at eliminating the legacy of Cecil Rhodes in England. So the, the antidote to this myth is to read about the colonization. So there is this book, King Leopold's Ghost. I gave it to one of my students to summarize. And she said that it was so horrible that she could not sleep because the what the millions of people were killed, they would take a family and this has happened to millions of people and they would tell the man to go out and collect rubber from the trees and he had a quota, he had to bring in some amount of rubber, some specified amount. If he could not produce that amount of rubber, then his hands were chopped off in front of his family and he was left to bleed and die. So this kind of horrible things were done during colonization. Indonesians have their own horror stories. Ah, uh, Yes, this is in the Dutch War of Independence. There were millions of Indonesians killed uh, brutally, ruthlessly, and the people who killed them, they were made as heroes. And so there is this 
statue of uh, uh, John Peter Zoon Cohen uh, in Indonesia. And after this, uh, the recent awakening and the understanding, and the, these are not heroes, these are barbarians, the people are trying to pull down the statue, but the police is protecting them. Uh, there is this book about the British Empire and how uh, it was just a continuous river of blood that was uh, that was the source of the power of the British. They just kept killing and killing and killing. So basically, to decolonize our minds, we have to differentiate between the story which is being told and the truth which is underlying and. For that purpose, it's very useful to consider the invasion of Iraq, which happened only recently. So there was a cover story that was created in uh, Europe and USA that uh, the invasion of the war is to liberate the people, to bring them freedom and democracy and to destroy an evil dictator and to protect the world from the threat of weapons of mass destruction. All of these were just... Uh, lies and the reality is that the war was done for the protection of oil interests and sometimes the truth slips out so one of the european leaders madeline albright was asked on the stage on on tv he says you can find a recording of it video clip on youtube if you like and she was asked by the interviewer we have heard that a half a million children died in iraq that's more than hiroshima and is it worth it? You know, your political goals, you want to control oil. And so are you ready to kill a half a million children for it? She said, yes, it's hard choice, but it is worth it. So this is the real barbarian uh, uh, civilization that uh, is ready to kill half a million children to achieve political goals. So the fourth myth is that there has been a lot of progress under Western leadership. So for, to understand this, we have to understand what progress means. So here is the argument that is being made today. Today there is a lot more awareness of the very, very bad things that Europeans did. And so, and also the very, very bad things that, uh, that capitalism does. So another, a new argument has been invented to defend Europe and to defend European civilization and to defend capitalism, which is their economic system. And this is called the hockey stick argument. And it shows that if you look at all sorts of indicators, then everything is flat up until about 18th, 19th century. And then suddenly everything starts skyrocketing. So there is an explosive growth in life expectancy, in GDP, in uh, reduction in poverty, in energy capture, <coughs> and uh, in democracy, etc., etc. So they say that even though there are many problems, yes, billion people are poor, and there's inequality, and there is injustice, and there's oppression, and there's wars, but everything is getting better. And amazingly so, almost miraculously so. So we should put up with the system despite all its faults because of the so much that it is del delivering so fast. So this is a false argument, but this is the current uh, argument. So we need to learn how to argue against it. And unfortunately, this is a difficult argument and it's, uh, it's difficult to counter it. There, you can counter it effectively but it requires some time. So I'm just going to give some sketch of some things that, uh, that we can use. So first of all, what is the criteria for progress? You see, the criteria for progress is the one that the civilization which chooses to conquer and loot and exploit chooses. So if you have more power, you have more money, then it doesn't matter if you looted the money from others, uh, you are more advanced. So that's one Thing that the uh, criteria for progress are not the right ones. And also, this is just one line. It, it shows us averages, but it doesn't show the true picture, what is happening to the people as a whole.
So if one person has one billion dollars <throat> and all others have one thousand dollars, uh, then the average will be maybe one million. And so you can say that on the average everybody has a million dollars, but the reality is that there is one billionaire and everybody else is poor. So the average conceals the true picture. Did scientific progress lead to prosperity? Actually, scientific progress has brought us to the to enormously destructive wars. The World War I and World War II had death toll uh, in like 70 millions, never before seen in the history of planet because of the advanced technology of bombing and, and uh, many other uh, scientific inventions which led to death and destruction on a large scale. And ultimately, this all of this science is destroying the whole planet and uh, it is possible that human beings will be unable to live on this planet. We do not have time to dispel all of the statistical disinformation and misinformation that is widespread. A basic general principle is that Daryl Heff's uh, textbook on how to lie with statistics has more sales than all of the statistical tests combined. It is very easy to lie with statistics. For example, the number of children dying in the planet is increasing, but the infant mortality rates are going down because when you divide this number by the population, the ratio is smaller. This is a deception. Similarly, more than a billion people live under the po poverty line, but if you look at the averages, it seems like everybody is getting better off. Uh, concepts of scarcity and trickle down from economics are deceptions which are meant to pacify the masses and to perpetuate the system which concentrates wealth in the hands of a very small minority. In particular, the number of people owning half the wealth of the planet has shrunk from more than 100 to less than 10 over the past two decades. So, progress really means that we should all feel more welfare. So, the Western myth is that welfare is just pleasure, power and profits. But actually, human welfare depends on our character traits and our social relationships. And the consumption of goods and services just brings a short-term pleasure, but not long-term welfare. And today, if you look at what's happening in the West, because of their emphasis on just gathering material, so they have they are very high standards of living, meaning that they live in big houses and drive big cars and have fr fridges and, 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 and washing machines. But the family is almost broken. More than 60% of the children are born outside of yeah, to single mothers. And there are, uh, there are very, very few, the percentage of families that are mother, father and children is like about 25% now. It used to be 60%. So very, uh, the, the families are being broken up because everyone is selfish and greedy. And uh, there is this very nice uh, video to watch, which explains the difference between short-term pleasure and long-term welfare. And uh, if you look at how much wealth has gained, uh, yani the planet is becoming wealthy, and we look at where this wealth is going, this is in the US where the data is available. So the top 1% and the top next 9% have more than half of the wealth. The upper 40% has most of it and the bottom 50% has nothing. So half of the planet is growing poorer, but the average is going high. So we can say that there is growth. And similarly, this picture shows the deaths due to conflicts. And if you look at the, the upper line, you see that it's increasing and it's high historical levels. But if you look at the blue line, that's due to wars. So when they argue, they look at the blue line, which is the curve of deaths due to wars, and they say, oh, look, the wars are decreasing and we are living in a peaceful era. And this is true if you look at the blue line. But if you look at the total deaths due to the armed industry, then this number of deaths is massively increasing. So a lot of propaganda is made by using the wrong kinds of statistics. There is a famous aphorism that, uh, we have statistics, we have uh, lies, damned lies and statistics. The statistics are the worst kind of lie. And uh, as an expert statistician, I can tell you that you can take any collection of numbers 
and uh, make a model which makes it say anything it likes. So you can use any numbers to prove anything at all. Statistics is just a fraud by numbers. So this is the real hockey stick. What has have been happening to the temperature and it has been going up uh, since 1900 basically because of the energy. You see they say about how we have been uh, able to use a lot of energy but they don't mention that this energy use is destroying the planet we live on and there is a lot of documentation of how very terrible things are happening in terms of climate change. One more argument against the hockey stick is the Easterlin paradox. And basically Easterlin shows that the GDP is not very correlated to the happiness level. And um, here, this is in the USA, it shows that the GDP has been going up and up and up, but the percentage of the population who, are, who say that we are very happy has been going down steadily. So basically money does not buy happiness. The second graph is a similar one of the countries and it shows the happiness in the countries and also shows the income levels, the average growth rate in the income levels. And it shows again that there is a negative correlation. Countries which are growing very fast are not very happy uh, and countries which are not growing very fast have more happiness. So the correlation is weak but basically what we can see from this is that growth in standards of living is not the uh, cure for um, becoming uh, having more welfare or becoming happier. The idea that the European civilization brought benefits to barbarians and savages can be replaced by the truth that European barbarians and savages looted the entire planet and destroyed civilization all over the planet. And over the course of the centuries, the science and technology developed for the purpose of increasing power, domination and exploitation has done that. Uh, billions of people are impo impoverished, helpless and exploited and the entire planet is suffering from the uh, scientific technology which creates massive exploitation and climate change threatens to make the planet uninhabitable even for human beings.